All right, round one roundup. The US Open has begun. The first two days are in the books and we're gonna wrap up what's happened so far in round one. Sitsipas, Halep, and Raducanu have all lost amongst a few other seeds. Not a huge upset of the first round, but still some big losses. And Serena Williams is still in the draw. Will tonight be her last night ever on a tennis court in a real match? We'll see. Here's the slice presented by Points Bet Canada. Let's get into it. Thanks for being here, people. Stephen Boughton with you again. Thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing and following me on Twitter, following The Slice on Twitter, at The Slice Tennis, because we are doing our best to keep you up to date with everything that's going on. And there's obviously a million things that are going on. One thing I have to mention before anything else is you need to go to our website or the link below and join our new newsletter. It's called The Monday Bagel, where I thought it would be a great idea to send you guys kind of condensed news and content straight to your inbox every Monday. Uh, it'll make you laugh. It'll just keep you up to date on the rankings, changes, next gen movers, Canadian players, whatever you want. You can give us feedback and I'd love to incorporate it. The first issue just went out on Monday now, but you can subscribe below for free to get the next issue. And we're doing a monthly giveaway of a mug or better, every mug, every month to a subscriber. So thanks for subscribing down below. The Slice is presented by Points Bet Canada. Also, what we did with points bet was cook up a little parlay for Canadian players. So the maple syrup parlay was Shapoval, Andrescu, Felix Auger, Seam, and uh, B Leila Fernandez to get through round one, and all four of them did, so the parlay hit. So join the link below if you're in Ontario and you want to get in on, in on that action. We appreciate it. Now, to the tennis. Round one, what happened? Uh, there was carnage. There's always carnage but it wasn't as bad as it could be, obviously. In the ATP, there was not too many upsets, but there was a couple big ones, like Sitsipas losing, obviously, we'll talk about that. Taylor Fritz lost uh, to Tracy Austin's son, Brandon Holt, and Roberto, Roberto Batista Agut were probably the biggest upsets. On the WTA side, we had Ostapenko, so no one has to see that outfit anymore. Rybikina, the Wimbledon champ, who was absolutely getting shafted by getting put on like court 17 or something. Just no respect. Um, Rybikina out, Anisimova, Halep, Kazakina all have gone out in the first round. So if you didn't hear a big name that you follow there, they're still uh, in the tournament, as you know. Medvedev, Nadal still in it, Alcaraz still in it, um, Serena, Svantec still in it. So there's been some big losses, and I'm going to talk about kind of the three biggest right now. Now, I wasn't able to watch any of these matches live because I watched different ones like the Serena match, mind you. Was that not the coldest walkout into a match of all time? I think Serena Williams, like walking out to Kanye Diamonds from Sierra Leone was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It's just like, I got chills watching it from Europe here on TV instead of being there in person, which would have been amazing. Um, but what a, what a career. It's not over yet. So we'll talk about it when it's over, but she plays Contivate tonight. That's going to be epic. Um, but sits a pass. So I didn't, yeah, I wasn't able to watch any of these matches live, but I'm going to talk about what it means for each player going uh, forward. And Tsitsipas, you know, just a big head scratcher. He was down 6-0, 5-0, and no one could believe what's going on. So, you know, he was saying how Daniel Galani, the guy who's playing, or, you know, was playing like a world-class player, and then he was just playing terribly. I didn't watch the match. I haven't even literally looked at the stats. I know I'm not being a great journalist in that way, but... You shouldn't have to in a first round match like this for a guy that sits a pass. So that's a big shocking loss for him. Sad for him as well because he's had a good year. People people have said he's had a crash year. I've kind of wondered, is it a good year or a bad year? But if you look at the rankings, he's second in the race to 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 turn. So he's second in the points race in 2022. Kind of he's probably gonna be third after this tournament with uh, Alcaraz. Um, you know, he won a Masters 1000, made another final, won another tournament on grass. So he's had like a good year compared to the you know, top 15 other guys in the world. But for him, for Sitsipas, for what his expectations are and talent are, he's lost in the semifinals of Australia. Good result. You know, expected result. That's the results he want. Top four, top five guy. Fourth round at the French Open when you, you know, he was maybe the favorite to win, one of the big favorites to win. Third round at Wimbledon. Uh, and then first round at the US Open. That's like a terrible year in the majors for a guy of Sitsipas's stature where he wants to go in tennis, et cetera. 
So I'm not being too hard on him, but he clearly seems like he's taken some mental damage this year with some losses. Curious losses, Holger Rune loss, um, and then this one for sure. I even think in losing to Chorich um, was a weird match at the end there in Cincinnati. And just some, you know, it seems like mentally he has not been, that has not, that's been the thing that's let him down this year more than anything. You know, you could obviously point to the arm, which he was getting worked on a little bit in this match. I saw um, the right elbow, which has, you know, he had surgery on it previously, but just tough for him. I'm not giving him up, up on him at all. I think it's ridiculous to put too much criticize criticism on him. He's still 23 and he's not, none of these guys, let's, let's be honest, none of these guys are following the trajectory or will follow the trajectory of Federer, Nadal, or Djokovic. That's kind of the standard we always hold them to, but it's kind of ridiculous. So I'm still in huge on Sitsa Pass. Uh, I would be shocked if he didn't win a slam next year. I was, I think I probably said like I was expecting him to win one this year, but obviously he didn't. Uh, there's a lot more tennis to play. He'll be disappointed, but at the end of the day, tough one. And then playing on the ATP tour is tough. Uh, Simona Halep, Karina Mustafa, uh, our resident Romanian, will be sad to see Halep go out. Frustrating result, obviously, for Halep, but her game's trending in the right direction with Murata Glue. Clearly, they you know had an amazing title in Toronto. So at her age, I think you know it's it's disappointing to lose first round, no matter what. End of story. But I think she can take the momentum she's gotten in the last few weeks uh, positively and turn that into a really good start to 2023. Um, and she should be dangerous at most slams. Still going forward, still with her age, because she seems to have gotten a second wind. But this is a tough loss for her, for sure. Now, Radu Kanu. The difference... Radu, Radu Kanu, how do I think about this? The difference between winning the US Open last year and losing in the first round this year, the biggest thing you can point your finger at is pressure. Pressure is the thing that affects tennis players universally and probably more than anything else. She won last year. You know, people have criticized it afterwards saying she had like a fluke draw or it was rigged or whatever. She went through the draw and just beat down everyone and won as a qualifier, won the tournament. And her losing in the first round this year after everyone was wondering what she going to do, 2,000 points to defend, her losing in the first round this year solidifies how insane her win was last year and how it was truly the most shocking and unexpected major victory probably of all time in tennis that I definitely, that I know about. So that, because it shows that she's not ready now to consistently compete for major titles at all, but she somehow won the US Open last year. So you have to say she has now obviously the talent to win a major because she already did, so she can do it again. Um, but the mental strength it takes to handle the pressure that she's been under this year um, comes with time. You just can't rush that. Uh, I think somehow you can rush blitzing a US Open tournament and winning it, but you can't rush that mental fortitude that it would take to do it repeatedly. Um, copy, carbon copy, Daniil Medvedev, Stefano Tsitsipas, Zverev, any of these ATB guys who also can't handle that pressure. So um, super, you know, tough loss for, for Raducanu, but she kind of pointed out, you know, she's sad, obviously. I don't feel bad for her in the slightest. She already won the US Open. She could retire now and be more successful than most players in the WTA ever. Um, but she's going to start from scratch again. You know, it's a clean slate. She's going to be ranked around 80 in the world and she'll have to build it back up kind of more organically or naturally, you'd guess. So yeah, that's that. For her, it's a tough loss, tough loss for Halep and really, you know, kind of depressing loss for Sitsipas, who I had going deep in this tournament. Um, but that's round one, round two. We've seen Djokovic, Nadal, and Federer at one time or another another in their career falter in the first or second rounds of tournaments. So it can happen to anyone and younger players are definitely more prone to it, obviously. So that's the slice on the round one roundup. Um, looking forward quickly into the draw, we got Sviatek plays Sloane Stevens next. That's going to be pretty fire. Um, like I said, um, Serena Williams plays Contivate tonight. It's going to be packed out again. There were some crazy record numbers um, in her last match. Like I said, the walkout was fire. Um, Contivate the number two seed. That's obviously a touch, but tough match. But they, you know, Bedosa, Contivate, even Shvatik now, they can all lose at any point. And if you're going to feel the pressure against anyone, it's going to be Serena Williams on the Arthur Ashe Stadium in front of the U.S. Open. Crazy crowd that'll be wanting her to win. Leila Fernandez tonight, Samps versus Samsonova. That's crazy because Sams Samsonova has been on a crazy hot run. Um, won the last two tournaments she's played, hang handing out breadsticks left, right, and center. Uh, Medvedev plays um, tonight, I think. Um, Rude plays tonight. 
um, Jack Draper versus Felix Augeli seems a match that's going on tonight, and we're probably going to do a watch party for that one as well. So lots of good matches in round two, but this has been the round one roundup from the slice here. And what do you guys think? Let me know down below, and we will see you guys again here soon on the channel. Subscribe to the Monday Bagel down below. We'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.